Hi. Hey. Yeah. We're jumping straight in. I don't need a lead in. No. Um, despite all of our, uh, the 10 minutes of us bantering around prior to this, but um, I'm, I'm really excited about this pour for a lot of reasons. Um, one has to do with just, I remember being in college and Makers was kind of like fancy. Mm -hmm. And I used to drink at my college bar either Makers and Seven or Makers and Coke. And I thought I was the shit. Um, and, I, and so Makers to me was like my first memory of really diving into true whiskey. Um, I know you were a JD man for a long time. I never drank a lot of Jack. Jack and Beam. Beam, Beam was often the, like the one dollar yeah. Beam and Coke kind of thing. But I was always that guy that went like, I'll take the makers, please. And I don't know why. Maybe it was the red wax. By the way, Bill Sanders Jr. Uh, Senior's Weiss idea. So the okay. labeling, the okay. bottle selection, and the red wax, all her idea. Yeah. But it worked on me as a as a 21-year-old kid. We'll, we'll call it 21. Um, <laughs> because uh, it's what I remember as being my first introduction into American whiskey. So I have an emotional connection to makers to begin with. Um, well, I was just going to say the Jack Daniels was definitely what I was introduced to and drank a lot of, but Makers was, in my opinion at the time, the more expensive version yeah. of, of, of bourbon. And when I ordered that, I also felt fancy, <laughs> right, uh, right. but I, and for some reason, Makers was a little bit more expensive, uh, at a lot of places that I remember, whereas Jack Daniels was a little bit cheaper. Yeah, and I grew up around it, but I remember that being a little bit higher end when I wanted to impress somebody or order makers. Yeah, so and and here's the story behind that. So uh, it should have been more expensive, you know, like when you think about what it is and the fact that we back in our youth compared them to being the same thing. They're not. You know, you got a sour mash whiskey from Tennessee and Jack yeah. Daniels, yeah. and then you've got a, a one of the original weeded bourbons. Yeah. Um, out of Kentucky, um, now that is all the craze, which is a Kentucky weeded bourbon. Yeah. But Makers is the original kind of structure to that. You know, they've been doing weeded bourbon, at least from a mass manufacturing standpoint. You know, um, but America's they call it the America, America's original weeded bourbon. Um, what you know, there's a lot of arguments to that of when they actually started doing that. But you're talking about a very, very, uh, I think. The first to mainstream weeded bourbon. It's right? an iconic brand. It's an iconic brand. Yeah. Tasting room, by the way, bonkers. You know, a, a million dollars worth of glass artwork hangs over your head as you're in the sitting room. You know, like it's unbelievable. And let me clarify, Makers was what I drank neat. Yeah. So yeah. when I was in college, it was like I'm going to order a Makers. Oh meat. shit! I didn't. I because was, I was it was good. good. But the JD, I was like, I'll take a Jack and Coke. Oh, I drank Maker's yeah. Coke, Maker's Ginger, Maker's... But, well, I mean, not that I didn't mix it, um, but that was my new... And here's the thing, I still do. College game day for me, yeah. if I drank straight bourbon beginning at 6 a.m. in the morning on the West Coast, I'd be in bed by noon. Um, you know, like, but I can actually start, you know, late morning watching my college football by mixing a nice weeded bourbon or a nice bourbon with some seven or ginger through the day, mm -hmm. and a regular Makers or Knob Creek finds its way into my glass quite often on those days, um, mainly because of my emotional connection. The second part to the reason why I'm kind of connected to that is, so uh, by the way, um, Bill Samuel Sr., um, he's the one that kind of restarted Makers Mark, uh, sat on a 170-year-old uh, recipe from his family who had distilled forever, um, and his drapes caught fire, and he literally burned the recipe. <laughs> his family recipe was burned up in a fire in his kitchen, and he lost the recipe. And so he didn't know. That's the story. That's the story. And look, everything's a story, right? The reason uh, and the way that he kind He did of, not fall asleep with a cigarette in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, and what he uh, apparently did is instead of making a bunch of... He wanted to come up with another recipe for making bourbon, and instead of making a bunch of different batches of whiskey with different grain mashes, he baked a bunch of different loaves of bread with different grain uh, bills. Like he, so he used different grains to build uh, bread, to make bread. Yeah. 
and then tasted the bread and based off the bread is how he came up with his mash bill. That's cool. And the wheat, it, the wheat um, bread is what he thought added the most complexity with the most palatable kind of bread. That's pretty damn scientific. Yeah. That would well, be I mean, it. it's, well, science, experiments. science experiments, right? Yeah, you know, so, it. so that's how they re-came up with and became a weeded bourbon was based on him baking bread. Um, fast forward years. Uh, Bill Samuels Jr. is the signature on most bottles now or Maker's Mark. Um, and the reason I said I'm also super partial is I got to have a night out with Bill Samuels Jr. Um, met him out and uh, I, was, I was brought as a group of uh, high volume buyers at the time. I was working for a restaurant group that bought shit loads of liquor. Um, he's a huge sports fan. And when he found out that I played college ball, yeah. that's all he wanted to talk about. Yeah. He told me the story that he was the bastard of his family. They all went to the University of Kentucky, and he went to Louisville. Okay. Um, and he told me the story of hiring Rick Patino with the AD of Louisville in his living room. Oh, wow. And how he was almost disowned by his family. Oh my god! Uh, That's so, great. so I also remember, uh, Mom. You'll also never yeah. watch this. I remember the <laughs> night that I drunk dialed you from the back of the limo with Bill Sanders Jr. <laughs> obliterated because that nice. guy can drink yeah. like you cannot believe. Yeah. Um, but here's the cool story, and this is why I'm kind of loyal to the brand. After that meeting, and I totally bogarted his attention all night long. There's like. 30 or 40 people that never got to talk to him. He followed me around, we sat at booths, we talked college sports. This guy started sending me everything in the world that the Maker's Mark Wax sent nice. directly to me. Nice. And so he sent me the a, original, a Louisville Slugger. That's cool. Dip in Maker's Mark Wax, signed by Bill Sanders Jr. Cool. Um, he sent me a college football, dipped in Maker's Mark Wax, signed by Bill Sanders Jr. It's yeah. in my office at work. Yeah. He sent me a pool stick. Yeah. Um, dipped in Maker's Mark Wax. Um, and then he uh, ended up going, like, uh, about two months or so after I had met him, he was doing a discussion at the University of South Carolina at their business, school of business. And he, based on our meeting, went and bought a Clemson sweatshirt and stood in front of the University of South Carolina sign in his Clemson sweatshirt and sent it to me. Oh, like, so, that's so great. I'll never forget the fact that this yeah. guy understands the business, that he understands building uh, a network of people, mm -hmm. um, that he was super genuine, super genu generous. Um, and uh, like this guy had no business doing any of that for me. And again, it just blew me away. So that's, that's cool. Uh, so Bill Samuels Jr., you'll never see this. But you forever made a mark on me as a whiskey drinker and potentially as, hey, who knows, maybe our experiences launched my interest and passion for all of this. And if there's ever a case that I could say thank you, I'll tell you thank you. So yeah. Well, and then launched mine. So yeah. based on that. Yeah. So that's phenomenal. So considering you're still there and I need a sponsor to become a Kentucky Colonel, I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, so uh, so let's fast forward. So there is your Maker's Mark, Weed and Bourbon. You can buy that absolutely anywhere. Uh, incredible bourbon for the price. Buy it, drink it, mix it. Great for pies, great for drinking, great for mixing, whatever you want to do. Every Costco has a 1.75. Yeah. Um, but not that long ago, um, they came out with Maker's Mark 46. Yeah. Um, Maker's Mark 46 is like a cask strength. Mm -hmm. um, bourbon it's a fantastic bourbon for the price i think 46 still sells for somewhere south of 40 or 50 bucks mm -hmm. um 46 to 55 dollars depending on where you're at um and it seems like a lot when you just see the red wax and you think it's maker's mark but i'm telling you that that is uh that's a quality quality bourbon um 46 kind of began to launch into a whole nother world because now you've got this cask strength aged weeded bourbon that you can do a lot with and enter the private select kind of genre. Um, and I think Maker's Mark more than anyone else, as opposed to secondary barreling, use staves. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think we've ever talked about staves. We have not. 
and staves is literally using aged pieces and charred pieces of wood that's thrown into a barrel um, to add additional surface area and char, flavor, color, um, and almost amplify and, and, and uh, speed up the aging process. Um, you know, this is not a stave, but a similar concept. Hand me that little uh, trophy cup right there. Right there, yeah. So something that people do uh, with things like this, these are, these are also wood pieces that have been charred to a level or flavored to a level. And you can see that the whole idea is to add a whole bunch of surface area by spiraling them. Um, and these are things that you can add into your own barrel or into your own bottles to mimic aging at an accelerated pace. Um, while your staves don't look anything like this, the concept is the same. Mm -hmm. I'm adding pieces of charred wood into the actual juice to add surface area and char levels um, that are not found in that natural barrel, right? Mm -hmm. So as you look and find these private label guys, you'll uh, they call them these, uh, you know, NM series. Um, I'm sorry, no, I'm frozen. Um, uh, we'll pick that up later. Um, you'll see that on the front here, uh, they'll tell you what kind of stains they're adding. Um, and all these guys add different uh, kind of profiles. So yes, I'm getting older, so I'll do this. Um, so this is uh, baked American. This is uh, seared French. This is Maker's Mark 46, so additional barrels of the 46. Um, uh, this is roasted French, uh, medians and then toasted French spice. So in this case, like this bottle had two, two, three, and three of those staves added to the actual barrel because it's a single barrel outside of that private selection. Right. Mm -hmm. And so this is a very unique profile. Um, the one that we poured you is four seared French uh, cuvee barrels and six Maker's Mark 46. So accelerated that 46 and four French cuvee barrel staves. And this is version two and this is version three. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So of the private selections. And well, for for uh, who we actually, the private who, who we, we picked it up. Who we picked it up from, yeah. right? So um, the, the uh, S14 right here just represents again uh, Samuels the fourth. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that kind of stuck and now they kind of have that seal for everybody. So yeah. that's Bill Samuels Jr. Um, that S4 is, he, the junior is actually the fourth. Yeah. Um, he's junior, junior, junior. Yeah. Um, but um, I think the cool thing about what they're doing with this is you've got this barrel proof weeded bourbon of impeccable heritage that is now getting experimented with with all yeah. kinds of layers of different flavors that are never ending. So if you like a certain profile of it, you can go out there and find a never ending array of mixtures of these guys to try and see what adding these different staves does. Well, the one that we poured is a 109. Yep. And then the other version that we have here is a, one, a 112. Yeah. 112. And that's from October 2021. This is from September 2020 is what you're, you guys are getting. So you there. may see different versions of this, but they may have different alcohol by volume, they may, yeah. you know, be done a little bit differently in terms of what they, what the stage they put in. And or, Total Wine and BevMo both do their own, because again, yeah. Maker's Mark is a huge, you can do any club, and hopefully yeah. one day our club will be able to do the yeah. same thing, where we can go and pick and choose and mix our own concoction of, you know, Maker's 46. Um, and, and we're we're right. in a we're in a place right now moving into the holidays where you're going to start seeing some bottles of makers that's going to come out that are smaller bottles. I don't know if they're three point seven five or oh, like the, that. The There'll be a series of three of selections. Yeah. One might be the forty six. There'll be a little different variations. There'll be like holiday packs, and so you're going to start seeing that I think here November, December, January. Uh, you know, Costco, other places. And it's worth a pickup because you're gonna you're gonna try some juice that's a little bit different, a little bit different of a variation than, than what you're used to getting on a regular basis. Yeah. So Bill Samuel Senior, when he first created this, um, substituted the rye with red winter wheat, um, and that all came from the bed the bread baking kind of experiment. Um, and his quote was he wanted to make a whiskey 
quote that didn't blow my ears off, you know. Um, and so he always was looking for that kind of a softer edge to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that despite the proofing, that this maker's mark continues to kind of live up to that yeah. that heritage of being something that is easy to drink that doesn't blow your we, ears off. We went through... Uh, I don't know, about a half a bottle of, I believe it was this version that we poured for everybody, playing darts, I don't know, a month or so ago, a couple weeks ago, and the, it was so smooth, but the proof was so high, but it was yeah. unbelievably, it did not blow your hair back, yeah. but tasty. Yeah, it's super tasty, um, and I will say that there is a tasting note in this one that I've never thrown in a whiskey in my life. But it definitely speaks to my South Carolina ness. Um, we'll get to that in a second. So um, from that, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of do this because again, my eyes are getting terrible, especially in this light. Um, but we're gonna go with it. I've got um, oh my god, god I know coming yeah. coming off. So we just came off the Basil Hayden's toast, yeah. and while that is complex, it's very soft. Mm -hmm. This is not soft. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very distinct as you start to get flavors. But the nose is so much more complex and, and to me, wow. better than, than the Basil Hayden Toast. Well, it's more traditional. Yeah. So uh, the Basil Hayden Toast uh, has a, a secondary grain mm -hmm. of brown rice. This does not. You got that red winter wheat. Um, but so you're going to get your traditional bourbon profile on this guy. Some crazy legs. You get... Stark, too. Yeah, you get, you get cinnamon. You get, mm. uh, you get caramel. Lots of baking spices, and so when I think about again getting ready for the fall, yeah. like the baking spices in this guy, I think of like cinnamon apples and all these kind of flavors in this guy. So just incredibly distinct and forward when it comes to those profiles. Um, hmm. So this one gives you a little bit more of that burn through the nose. Again, because we just hopped up 32 proof from yeah. our last drink, right? Yeah. So um, you're Boy. getting that. But there's some red fruit, like stone fruit, plum, right off the beginning. Yeah. Tobacco comes through. Um, and here's you get a little hug. Oh, perfect Kentucky hug. But it's yeah. smooth. Um, and here's when I get my South Carolina profile. I know it sounds stupid. And if you've never had them, my wife will tell you congratulations because she hates them. But if you're from where I'm from, it's a staple. You can call it just peanut. But to me, I get a, uh, there's a memory that sparked a bow peanuts that I grew up going through the mountains of South Carolina, going to game day in Clemson. You'd stop on the roadside and pick up a bag of boiled peanuts, Cajun peanuts, whatever it is. There's a texture and a flavor, a salinity, a brine, a saltiness, and a subtle nuttiness that, for me, I just get it on this. Yeah. And maybe it's because most likely when I was doing that, I also might have been drinking Makers. If that's how our brain works, then unbelievable, you know, like that. Yeah. That's, but yeah. I pull boiled peanuts with this guy as a finishing taste like on that for initial taste. Yeah. Um, from a finish, you get you get leather, you get clove from that baking spice, and you get you get the oak. I think because of the, the staves that are thrown back in there, I think there is an oak finish to it that is not overwhelming. It's not a wet oak. It's just a nice barrel finish kind of oak that really balances out the proof and it balances out the fruit. So um, it's a damn good whiskey. Um, I'm a big fan of this specific <laughs> barrel yeah. proof, uh, private selection. Um, this one uh, is actually a slightly darker mm -hmm. version. Um, and this one, they, they, they actually have advertised as being more like a, a Cadbury yeah. uh, chocolate, cad chocolate yeah. covered peanut kind of thing. And it's crazy that the peanut again comes out in the descriptor for this. Well, the fact that they said there was a chocolate chocolate peanut would suggest that. Yeah, the, there the, is the boiled some, peanut piece yeah. of this one, right? Yeah. Right, right. So, um, so my palate is not as sophisticated as yours, and so I, and maybe I'm getting it, maybe I'm not. But I, it's the beauty of of drinking different bourbons is the nostalgia 
that you get yeah. from times in your life um, and just the different aromas, the taste, whatever it is. But the fact that this one used peanut as in the descriptor probably means that there's a little bit of that in this too. Yeah, and same same yep. initial match bill. Um, so, you know, now that I'm speaking after kind of drinking, um, there's like a very high end, like that maraschino cherry um, kind of back end to it that I never got before. Um, but I'm getting it now as I'm, as I'm talking a lot as I've been drinking, so. Um, really cool bourbon. Uh, this is an amazing fall pour. Now that we're finally cooling down a little bit, I think about sitting outside around a fire pit. Um, sort of cooling down. Well, we're getting there. We're getting there. I mean, tonight yeah. is way cooler. Yeah. Um, so, and it's supposed to start to dip from here. Uh, I think about going camping, sitting around a campfire, eating some s'mores, um, you know, having some barbecue, um, things that you do in the fall. This thing just kind of just goes with it naturally. It's a great evening pour. It is a great evening pour. So, um, I hope that you guys absolutely enjoy this as much as we do. Uh, I love kind of revisiting. I've, I've been waiting to get to Maker's Mark at some point because yeah. it means something. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate you humoring me for going down memory road. Um, but uh, uh, to Bill Samuels Jr., who made a huge impact on my appreciation for American whiskey, but to his great-grandfather, you know, who baked bread to figure out how to make better whiskey, um, uh, I, I say thank salute, you. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> yeah. and cheers. cheers, and uh, we hope you guys enjoy uh, partaking this month's pour, um, because you can't get this kind of quite concoction mix again, but you can get one similar, so yeah. I encourage you to experiment if you see one of these bottles, uh, start to buy a few of them, compare them side by side with the different finishes, because that's a whole other like, side uh, project of your own to kind of see how these different staves can impact barrels. Yeah. But remember, they're, pri they're private select. And so you know, I mean. you're, you're going to have to find them from different places. I mean, yeah. not, it's not just unique to certain establishments. Each one may have their own version of this, which are different barrels in the Rick House. Yeah. Um, so go out there and explore, and hopefully, you find something you enjoy. Yeah. But they all start from the same base. That's right. So, yeah, they, they, they start from good juice to begin with. So. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, cheers. Cheers to you. It's great seeing you guys all again, or at least I don't see you. Um, it's great talking to you all again. Yeah. Um, and we will be all back. All six of you out there. Appreciate yeah. you. Yeah, and we'll be back real soon with uh, the October Wars. So have a good one. All right.